Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and I started making my blue-footed booby. The, the reason that I wanted to do a, any kind of bird was because we get a lot of questions out on my website about how do you balance a bird on just two feet. Now I said in a previous video that I was going to really challenge myself and make a dancing blue-footed booby, but boy was I wrong. <laughs> I hadn't yet done enough research to see how they dance and I for some reason I thought that they would dance with a you know one foot flat and the other foot just kind of balanced on his you know his I don't know what that would be called it's not his heel <laughs> but you know the back of his foot and that's not really the way they do it they put their foot way up in the air to show off to the other booby that they're trying to impress and that would mean making this guy balance really on one foot and I can't do that without putting a base under him. But even though this one is going to stand up on her own two feet, I do think it would be an awful lot of fun to have two of them with the other one dancing. Um, in order to do that, in order to make the pair work as a combined sculpture, I would have to attach both of them to a piece of wood. But it would just be so cute. So I do think I'm going to do that. I should have started the the dancing booby at the same time as I started this one, but I didn't think about it quite fast enough. <laughs> but but I do hope to get that one done too. But let me show you how I got this one done to this point. I made a pattern for her. You can use my pattern if you want to, or you can just go ahead and draw your own pattern out on a piece of paper. There are thousands of photographs of blue-footed boobies online, so you can easily find some resource photos. and Just go ahead and draw it yourself, or use mine. I'll put a link to it down below, and you can just uh, download it if you want to. Um, she still needs some tail feathers. She needs some feathers on her wings. She obviously needs some paper mache of some kind. I'm going to use the... Um, the Silky Smooth Air Dry Clay on my rest of, on my website. I'll put links to that down below too. She'll get all finished up in the next videos, but for this video, we're going to get her feet on there. That's the important part of this whole, <laughs> whole uh, project. So let's go ahead and get to it. To make it real easy for myself, I just drew out a pattern. I do have a video that shows you exactly how to make this kind of really simple pattern. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, go ahead and check that out. I'll put a link down below. You can use mine too if you want to, but you'll actually have more fun if you <laughs> draw your own. <laughs> the wings have a really long feather that sticks out about this far, and they have a nice long tail too that is obviously isn't on here. I printed them on full sheet labels just because it's really easy for me. You can just go ahead and draw your pattern right on a piece of cardboard. I'm going to use this chipboard, which is cereal box cardboard. You can use cardboard from an old um, carton that you get from Amazon or something. Uh, any kind of cardboard will work. And we're just using it to set the outline so that we know exactly what the outside shapes of the bird are gonna be. We're gonna have to fill in all the rounded shapes, of course, by ourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out and we'll get started. So now I'm gonna fill out the shapes with this crumpled paper. I'm looking at a picture of a booby right over there. You can't see him, but I've got it open so I, on the computer so I can see it. And I know that from the front, this, this the thickness of the body is almost exactly the same as the thickness of the neck. I guess with this, really long pointed uh, beak and, and just a straight skinny neck and body. It would just go straight into the um, into the ocean. They also have some kind of special way of keeping their brains from exploding when they hit the water, which is kind of helpful. Now let's see if this might actually be too big. And you know, if I crumple it really a lot, it will work. I'm just using really cheap masking tape that I got from the grocery store. Seems to work just fine. I'm not going to do any fine details with the paper, of course. This is just, just to fill out the, the roundness and I'll do all the details with the, with the air dry clay. Since the whole point of making the pattern in the first place is to make sure that you have the outlines right, then it obviously makes sense uh, to not put the paper 
up above the, the outline of the pattern. Otherwise, there would be no point in making one. I've decided that I'm making a female. And the way that you can tell whether it's a girl or a boy, the boys have round, smaller round black pupils, and the girls have star-shaped pupils that are larger. I think it's kind of interesting. They say there are very few animals that you can actually tell the difference um, by pupil size, but with this one, that's the way it works. If you get too aggravated by the fact that the paper keeps uncrumpling itself so that you, <laughs> while you're going to grab your tape, it all comes loose, you can go ahead and use uh, aluminum foil instead of crumpled paper. Because the, the foil, of course, you crumple it and it stays crumpled. It is a lot easier. Now you can see one problem with using the cereal box cardboard for a big flat piece like this is that I'm tending to warp it a little bit because I'm not being quite careful enough when I'm putting the tape on there. Just have to flatten it back out again. And I also, I kind of want her, I don't want her to just look straight forward. I think I'm going to bend her so that her head is looking sideways because they do that a lot. I think that'd be more fun. Now that I'm getting him kind of filled out and I can get a better feel for size, I can see he's not anywhere near as big as a seagull. <laughs> so if you want to make yours life size, depending on which article you read, um, I think you could easily make him bigger. But yeah, that's not, that's not seagull size. It's the right size to fit in my house. <laughs> it just doesn't happen to be as big as a real booby. I was yammering on about how this beak was built, and my cat unplugged my camera. <laughs> Their cats are so helpful in the studio, just so useful. It actually would be a lot easier to um, to, to mold the shapes of the of the beak, I think, um, in clay. And I'm just going to um, put the basics of it in here right now. Uh, put the final details on with, with either the epoxy or the air dry clay. By the way, when you're sculpting the, the beak, don't try to copy what I'm doing here. Look at photographs of beaks. There's some really nice close-ups on the internet so that you can see very, very clearly uh, how they're supposed to look. And it, it is so much better than just trying to copy this one because I'm, I'm not necessarily going to be doing it right. And it's really hard to see the shapes anyway when somebody's messing around with the, uh, with the foil. I use foil on the beak because um, it's, it's a lot easier to get you know, those really thin shapes than it is with the paper. And although I didn't do it on purpose, I actually, whoops, here he is. Um, I actually made him accidentally with his head slanted, or her head slanted just a little bit. So it's to the side and then a little bit slanty-wise. But I like it, so I'm, I'm going to keep it that way. So now we get to start playing with the feet. If this was a real bird, she'd have some bones and muscles up under her wings that we're not actually going to be able to see. Um, up, up at the top, there's the thigh muscle, then you've got the drumstick, um, if it happened to be a chicken, and then you have the foot, which comes down. That's, that's the actual part that you can see. And of course, there's muscles attached, and it's all kind of like a spring, which, which holds everything up. But our booby doesn't have any muscles, and she doesn't have any bones except for the, the actual um, bottom part of the, the foot that sticks out. So we're going to have to do a little bit of engineering in order to make sure that she can actually stand on her own two feet. So we'll end up with something that looks kind of like a sling, or you know, just, it's just going to hold her up. Once the toes are on there, and once we've made this wire a whole lot stiffer with some um, crumpled aluminum foil, then it, it should be really strong. 
Now I'm I'm using the foot pattern right now just as a um, something to give me an idea of where that first toe is going to go. I don't want the actual leg that shows to be very long, so it'll it's it's about like that according to the photographs. We're going to go up just a little bit more than that uh, up under her wing, bend it and back around. Bend it here. I want these legs to be the same length. This wire is e easy to bend, a lot easier than like a, a steel wire would be. But it's kind of expensive, so if you don't have any in the house, don't run out and buy some, just use something that you got out in the garage. I've done that many times and it works just fine. Now this is gonna be for the same toe on the other foot. I'm gonna cut it right there. And now we need the back of the sling, which will be, um, let's, let's make this, this toe right here. This one's kind of short. This one will give the best balance, I think. So we just need to make another one that has the same length of the foot, but it's going to be shorter for the sling part. I should be using a tool to help me bend them, make a nicer bend. This isn't the right tool, and I don't, I'm too lazy to go down to the basement and get one. Here we go. That'll work. Bend it right there. About this far. So it's going to go this way. I'm going to tape the, the legs together first. Trying to get those toes flat against the table. My table isn't actually flat. <laughs> I should get a piece of wood out here. I don't know why my table isn't flat, but it isn't, so I'm, I'm just going to do it this way. I see it was quite a bit off. Okay, and now let's see if we can get her in there. Now, she's got a lot more weight I'm going to be adding because I don't have her tail on there yet and I don't have her wings on yet. So that means that we're going to have to do a lot more fiddling before we actually put any paper mache clay on there. And there may actually need to be some more fiddling um, even after the paper mache clay because we don't know exactly how much all the parts are going to weigh until the very end. I did I did have to do that with the dodo. I just added a little bit of weight underneath her tail um, because the front of the dodo was too heavy. It might be that we have to add a little bit of weight here in her chest in order to get this one because of the weight of the tail. But we'll find out. And I'm going to go ahead and squish all these down so that it doesn't stick out too much and then tape them on and then smooth it off with a little bit more of the paper.
the breastbone does stick out just a little bit right there and that just happens to be right where I put the front of that um, the sling thing so that works out really good okay now we have to cut out those feet and give her two more toes Well, I goofed. <laughs> I just now went out and looked at photographs of booby feet to make sure that I was getting my toes in the right place. And I'm not. The long one goes on the outside. But, so, so I was using the wrong one for my pattern. <laughs> oh, oh, shoot. So don't do that. Um, I'm going to just change them. Have to bend this one in. Of course, I'll have to do all the balancing all over again. <laughs> hey, am I the only one who does things like that? I don't think so. Surely not. Okay, I fixed it. Does it still stand up? Yes? Okay. Sheesh. This is such a thin membrane on the bottoms of his her feet that you could actually make that out of fabric which would be kind of fun <laughs> now one problem with this kind of foot is that she doesn't have a back toe like a chicken does and it does really help if you have one going backwards too but this is going to work we just need two more toes just to to fill out that space this isn't going to actually hold anything up, but it'll um, help when we're adding the paper mache. You can see her; she's rocking right now. That means that I don't have the base of the foot exactly flat. And I'm not going to mess with it anymore because so many changes are going to happen later. So I could just get totally OCD, get it exactly uh, level right now and then I'd have to go around and do the entire thing all over again after I get the the um, the wings and the tail added so there's really no not a whole lot of point let's see what we're going to do about those wings which I've hidden under here we're going to fill in a little bit of this with some some more f um, paper and then there's going to be one long feather coming off of here Right about there. It's trying to make a gap and I think it's supposed to. So I'm going to stick some uh, paper in there just so it looks like the, the um, wing is sticking out just a little bit. Just needs a little bit of support is what I'm trying to say. So now I'm trying to keep the wing pattern real obvious without um, putting paper um, too much farther over that outline. Because again, it, there would be no point in making the wing pattern if we don't actually use it. So I got her wings all on there. 
just got them padded. So now we've got the basics. So if you just wanted to watch this video to find out, you know, how to balance a bird <laughs> on just two feet, basically you know how to do it now because this can be used with this whole cradle idea with the legs can be used with any kind of bird. I've used it for a tiny little baby chick and I've used it for the unreasonably large <laughs> dodo bird and it worked for both of them so it doesn't make any difference at all what kind of bird you're making if you want it to stand on two feet you can do it like this and you'll have to continue balancing it every time you add a little bit more weight to one end or the other you're going to have to keep changing it but once once you have the final shape and all of the, the paper mache and everything on there, then you'll be able to make that final adjustment with the feet and get a nice solid base for your for your sculpture. Um, she obviously needs a lot more work and so we're not going to bother about making sure that she balances right at the moment, but she will when we're all done. Now in the next video, I'm going to put those feathers on. I have a video showing you how I'm going to make those feathers. I've already done that. Not a whole lot of feathers, really. We're going to just sculpt most of them with the paper mache clay or air dry clay. Now, if you're following along, uh, because I have to spend a lot of time actually editing these videos, I go a little bit slow. So you might actually get your blue-footed booby done a long time before I do. No matter when you get it done, I hope you come back to the Daily Sculptors page on my website and show it off. I'll see you later. Um, this next video should come out in another couple of days, so be sure and watch for it. And remember to come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.